Welcome to My Alaska Dream. We're making an off-grid homestead right here in Southeast Alaska. A subscriber emailed me, Martin, and said, uh, for guys who've never split firewood before, could you take us through uh, from start to finish on how, how, uh, how the process works? So we're gonna fail a tree, buck it up, cut it into rounds, and then split it. I've got two trees that I need to take down. This one here, which is a leaner, and another one which is close to the cabin that I just want to get rid of. Uh, this is our first tree here. It's leaning in the direction we want it to go, but you may not be able to tell it, but there is a 15 mile an hour wind coming from the north, uh, northwest. So we're going to hook this tree up to, a, uh, to the winch just to make sure it falls in the right direction and a gust of wind doesn't come back and push it back on us and uh, fall on the house. That'd be a bad thing. So whenever I cut trees that are really close to the house, I always hook it up to a winch just to give it that little extra motivation to go the direction we want it to go. So let's get the, uh, let's get the, the snatch block hooked up. We'll get the winch hooked up to it and get this sucker taken down. All right, so once again, there's that tree right there. Uh, we want it to come towards this tree, so this is going to be our anchor point. There we go, that's for our snatch block there. All right, so this end is going to that tree. The other end is hooked up to our tractor over there that's got a uh, worn winch on it. All right, just to recap, we've got our tree at a high point tied off to the cable. Cable goes down to our anchor point with the snatch block. Then we'll go over and show you how we got the, uh, got it hooked up to our winch. Here's our winch right here. Let's get it off a spree spool. We'll get the controller plugged in. I'll get my wife out here and she can give us assistance. So I can yell at her and say, suck it in a little bit. And uh, that way we're not putting a whole bunch of tension on the tree pulling it forward i should point out that if you want to watch some good how-to videos on how to fell trees and everything there's a channel called guilty of treason t-r-e-e -E, treason uh they're like a, a a little company that goes and cuts down trees on people's property uh so if you want to look learn more about felling trees go check out that channel they're all professionals they know what they're doing uh, yeah, there it's a great channel to learn from if you're starting from scratch. Okay, so because I want to be safe, I always pick up my chaps and put them things on. Uh, I tell you what, I love these bugs. These are, they have like a little wire mesh. Uh, instead of um having safety glasses that when you work really hard you get your body core get warms up and then it's cold outside and you stop working and your glasses fog up all you know all of a sudden uh it doesn't do it with this because there's nothing to fog up it's just wire mesh uh so i wear those and some ear pro and because i want to be safe my wife wants me to be safe and you guys want me to be safe this year i'm gonna be wearing a helmet my son, uh, I used to work at a gold mine when we first moved up here. Uh, and then after my son's first year of college, he came back here and interned at the same mine I worked at and he had a helmet left over. So if you, if anybody was wondering what the little, little clip right here is, I painted it because I didn't want it. I didn't like a white helmet. But uh, if you were wondering what the little clip is, that's for your light for when you go underground. You just clamp a light on there and you click it on and then you can uh, go underground and see what you're doing. 
So let's get dressed up and get this tree down. It landed right by where the uh, the tree is. So now we need to buck this tree up into manageable sections. And for, for me, having the tractor, I normally buck them up into 10 foot sections, 10 to 12 foot sections. So uh, that's what we're gonna do here. Alright, so when you get a cut like this and it just falls straight and it's cut it's kind of it didn't separate very well like see how those have all separated pretty good uh, when you have something like this it's best to go get your cant hook your pv whatever your log ox and uh or, or just manually just roll this thing out of the way that way if you roll this out of the way that way when you make your next cut this section won't be pinching that section up there There you go, that, that will let this side drop because it's either going to drop that way or drop that way. Since we're, going, we're cutting uphill, it's probably going to drop this way and it would just pinch that together and wouldn't give that enough space to, uh, to fall flat or fall apart. All right, when you get to a section of the tree like this, uh, the, where it's resting straight on the ground, I have rocks underneath this tree and I don't want to cut all the way through because I'll dull my chain. Uh, and this tree is too heavy to use a tree lift the best method to use is uh, is to cut halfway or three quarters of the way through this tree and then get a cant hook or a PV, rotate the tree 180 degrees and then come back with your saw and, and cut the rest of the way through the tree. That's how you uh, you can make a cut, roll the tree halfway, and then cut cut through to the other side. Now that uh, we're here, I think I will go sharpen my saw. We'll cut the rest of this stuff up. Anyways, I'm gonna sharpen. It's two something, two thirty. It gets dark in thirty minutes, so that's it for tonight. I'll uh, come back. We'll start splitting this stuff and uh, show you the different methods of splitting and things. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Uh, hey, before I go, I started sharpening this and I thought, you know what, there's tons of sh how to sharpen saw videos, but uh, this little steel saw, it's a two-in-one, it basically it cuts your tooth and files down your raker at the same time. Uh, this thing's like 50 bucks. It's worth its weight in gold, dude. I love that. I mean, I used to hand file them and then then go back and, and file the raker separately. This thing just cuts so much time out of it, and it's so easy. I don't know what these files are made out of, but they're so much better than than the um, Oregon files and all the other stuff that you can buy. You know, the aftermarket stuff. Uh, I'd highly recommend this. And then if you don't have a, like a, a vice or a shop like I don't, I would get one of these. Now this is an Oregon. It's just a little stump clamp. Uh, that basically is you uh, you just hammer it into the to the stump and then you put your bar in it and then just thread your bar down and it holds your your saw uh, pretty secure every once in a while you'll have to either adjust it up and down but uh, 
these are the two things that I would recommend that you get. You're just starting out doing this because uh, you're definitely going to be filing your chain a lot and uh, it's, it's agonizing to do it and if you don't have a, a vise or if you're just trying to do it on a stump. So I invest, I don't know, together they're 70 bucks. If nothing else, I mean, you're going to need a file anyway. So uh, pick up the two-in-one file and the, the stump vise. These things are these things are awesome. The other thing I wanted to mention is when you file, every time you file, I always flip my bar. That way your bar wears even. All right, so once you have the wood all bucked up, uh, now I luckily have a tractor, so I can pile all my wood up here. I can let it dry for a season like this. Then I can cut it into rounds and let it dry again or I can split it from there, you know, cut it into rounds and then split it from there. But there's two basic ways to split one. My preferred method is with the split fire 3203. So all that is is a tractor attachment. I hook it up, I take my backhoe off, hook this up and split wood here. It's super cool, it's got a double blade. So this thing you can put a log on, it'll split this way. Then you can put another log on the other side and then it'll go back and split that way. That's super handy to have and it really cuts splitting wood in half. And it's also a lot faster splitting wood than the other method. The other method is with a maul. The maul doesn't have to be sharp. It's just basically a blunt power tool to bust through the stuff. It's got an edge on it, but it's not a sharp edge. It's not for cutting. It's more for splitting. It also has like a jackhammer on the backside, and that's for basically using a wedge. So what you can do is you can pound a wedge into, uh, into one of your rounds and split it that way. So we'll, uh, I'll link a video of me using the... Um, the split fire and then uh, we'll go over here and split a split around it's not a big one but it's a it's a dried it's a season when it's been sitting there for a year so it'll be super easy to split So can you split wood that you just cut in the rounds? Yeah, you can. It may be a little bit tougher to split because it's got a lot of moisture still and the fibers are still sticking together, but uh, it's definitely doable. So we'll take one of these rounds that we just cut. We'll split that and show you that it can be done. It's just easier to let them sit for, you know, six months, a year and then split them. And then once you split them, I typically try to let all my firewood set at least a year or more. That way it's super dry. The drier it is, the better it burns, the more efficient it is, and it doesn't build up uh, creosote or as much creosote in your chimney uh, as if you're burning green wood or, or, or moist wood or wet wood. Now I use a, because our ground here is so soft, I always cut on a, on, a, on another round. It just stiffens up and, and gives my the momentum of the maul uh, more ump for lack of a better word to to bust through it than if i'm uh just splitting on the ground because the ground has a lot of give to it uh the other thing is is i like it up a little higher so i don't have to bend down so low when i'm swinging this is a good when you're doing stuff like this too is a good time to break out your old picaroon or whatever you use that way you don't have to bend up pick your stuff up and stack it on stack it on whatever you're cutting on
All right, there you go. So that's pretty much the process. Then just stack the stuff. There's also several ways to stack them. You can stack them all going one way. You could stack them all going one way and then switch it up on the next row and go the next, the, uh, the opposite way. Uh, so there's just tons of, tons of options out there. Just uh, go out there and do what you think's best and, and uh, try different methods out and see what works for you. So as you can see, the, the mall is effective. It's a little more labor intensive. Actually, it's a lot more labor intensive. So uh, you might as well just downgrade right away because you're going to work up a sweat. It's basically uh, CrossFit for homesteaders. That's basically what it is. Um, but as you can see, I got a lot, a lot more wood to split. So I'm going to cut this video off, get to work, and then uh, hopefully see you guys next week.